When all the souls had chosen their lives, they went before Lachesis, and she sent with each, as the guardian of his life and the fulfiller of his choice, the daemon that he had chosen. This comes from Plato, Republic, Book 10. I have memories that I believe are prenatal. See what you make of this. I am in a discussion with someone, presumably male, whom I cannot see. Below us all is grey, and I can just make out the planet. He is asking me to choose my incarnation in Western Europe, then proceeds to attempt to talk me out of it. The next thing I can remember is standing in a circle with others who are about to be born, grey, gold, monotone. We are all wearing robes. We each hold a cup and drink the cup of parting. The next sequence. I am being wrapped in black stuff rather like windings, and these are meant to dim my sensitivities. I complain about this. The next sequence. I am lying in my cot. I am born. About two years. I can remember my parents' bedroom clearly and I am staring at the transfer of a lake on the inside of my court. The waters start shimmering and moving. Then I look up and there is a shimmering above my cot. There is a lady and she speaks to me. I am not going goo goo gaga. I am having an intelligent conversation at a time science tells me that I should not. She is my guardian. She asks, Are you sure you want to do it this way? I considered, then said yes. I believe I had opted to retain a faculty to be awake, which probably could be stressful. She said, I'll be back. See you later. At that, my intelligence faded, and I was back to Goo Goo Gaga. These memories, however strange, are very special to me. During my rather solitary childhood, I played in the trees and lawns of my back garden with an invisible friend called the Colonel, who stayed in a small apple tree out of sight of the house. He suggested games and ways to play with my toys, and I was never bored or lonely. The first indication that I was on the rocky road betwixt the light and the dark came at the age of 13, during an unpleasant school career. My last year of primary school and the class was saying the Lord's Prayer. I am surrounded by grey-blue mist. I can see myself, a young man with short hair and a clean long robe. Around all is mist, but a path clears and I find myself journeying along that path, being torn and buffeted from all directions. I stagger and I fall to my knees and I see myself ragged, torn, bleeding, bearded, and I crawl on and on and come to a clearing in this cruel mist. On a cross, amidst a pile of stones in the centre of the clearing is a figure, crucified. I crawl to the base of the cross and reach out to touch the foot of the figure. I may have thought that I was seeing Jesus then, maybe, but maybe I was seeing my quest to find myself. My first psychic attack happened at the age of 18, when three pairs of red eyes came towards me in my mind's eye, diving at me, causing pain when they passed over and scaring me. Not long after that, a parade of motley ghosts splitted across my mind's eye. Monks in dark robes with pointed hoods and unseen faces, wrappings on my wall, ornaments falling over. I started to fear the night, the noises I would hear, what was under my bed in the wardrobe, what I would see. One night, in the 1970s, in the twilight of my room, I felt that something horrible could happen, and I had left a little lamp on. My breathing was getting slower and slower, and worried I put my finger to my neck to take my pulse and realised that it was very, very slow. I gazed at the lamp. I noted a grainy effect of the light, as if I could see little individual photons or packets of light. To my horror, at the foot of my bed, 
a black hole had manifested in stark contrast to the light in the room, and I could feel myself being pulled in, as if some evil wanted to suck me into the pits of hell. Plagued by demonic images of brown and light brown piebald beings glowing with a brown inner light, strange manta rays being ridden across the astral plane with some horrible rider in them, light relief comes one evening when a scaly, coal-black imp visits me when I have the flu. And before I get frightened, notice that the little being is making a sensitive inquiry with pale pink eyes. In the late 70s, it seemed that I tried and tested many thoughts and images, grasping for analysis of incredible events, incredible coincidences. And it seemed to me that I had someone wonderful watching over me. I once saw her face, not sexual, but strong and beautiful as she knelt by my pillow. At night, my feet would be gently shaken, and as if I had tripped, I fell headlong into beautiful vistas and scenery. I remember being tripped up like this and falling through into another world, and I was not lying in my bed, but on a meadow of grass, surrounded by water and trees. And to my wonderment I could smell the grass and feel the air, and I saw four people in yellow sitting around me. And as I became more and more aware, I started to hear the sounds of the forest and meadow and feel the hand of my guide upon my brow. I started when I remembered a bad dream that I had left behind and knew that if I stayed longer in this beautiful place that I would never return to earth and to my home and my labours. Then I came home to my life on earth. I knew that I wanted to stay, perhaps longer, but that if I did I would never want to go back. I have since flown across that continent like a bird, seeing everything in detail that is photographic. I have seen strange sailing ships and circled them like a gull with another gull at my side. I open my eyes one morning and there is a lady wearing a Victorian black dress with a white lace collar and long black hair sitting on the end of my bed, combing her hair. I sit up, startled and my jaw is dropped open-mouthed in amazement. The lady turns round and looks at me smiling and mimics my open mouth and then disappears. <laughs>